Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Commander 2018. At the end, I'll have some pictures that we took of uh, my cat and dog. So Commander 2018, there are two ways to look at it. Rudy is very hyped on it. And he gives the examples of selling Commander 2017, Commander 2016, and how even though the prices crashed once upon a time, they have recovered. Now his video was responding to a post on Reddit. And the post on Reddit was one of the most upvoted, but it wasn't the only one saying that you should not buy Commander 2018. First off, I love Commander Precons. This year they increased the price and instead of getting cool reprints and interesting design, we got less value. So please don't buy them or at least buy the ones you feel that they put real magic into. They raise the price and drop the quality. The best way to ensure that we return to excellent standard is to not buy them. So it is interesting because this isn't the first time we've seen a post like this, which is saying that do not buy commander now the com people buying commander i would assume more commander decks are sold at your local walmart walmart versus local game shop because they just have so much of it all the time plus it's a walmart so people go there for other reasons than buy stuff and this would be kind of an add-on purchase the commander decks are not bad in my opinion they're not the best ever but they're also not, never bad buy. Uh, historically, there's never really been a commander deck that has, after three years, even if it's reprinted, isn't worth its MSRP. So we have Exquisite Invention at $105 on paper, which isn't bad. I mean, online, yeah, the prices are going to be really bad online because people do not play EDH online normally. But overall, Sahili is pretty good, I would say. A lot of artifacts are quite valuable. Unwinding Clock is kind of good. I don't have any problems with the deck value. The only one that we I would say is Jun. Jun is a little underwhelming. And like they say on Reddit, they could have put better land in it. So Jun is around 79.87. It doesn't really have that many high quality cards um, and not that many high quality reprints. So I feel like a lot of people are poo pooing this because of the Jun deck in particular. Now, historically, commander decks have always done well, regardless of if they made sense or mechanically. They've always sold out uh, for the most part. Um, there's going to be one of these decks that's going to spike in price and then that will be the deck that you never see at walmart or target and then the rest of them you occasionally see now the price increase so adaptive enchantment is 117 which is reasonable uh, people are expecting a lot of like crazy stuff in commander decks i don't expect that i expect to be able to play a friend introduce a friend to this format and to be super casual Reddit is not a good estimation of the actual Magic player group. It's such a small niche. Like to actually post on Reddit or comment or upvote on Reddit in the Magic the Gathering, you're already different from every other Magic player because there's millions of Magic players, but only 100,000 Reddit, like 100, 200,000 people on Reddit. So subjective reality is the most expensive at $128, which is, that's very respectable. So let's talk about the problem with uh, ex expectation. Uh, if you keep expecting more and more value, uh, it's not going to work out very well for you. Not in this game, uh, not in standard and modern. Standard and modern, there's no value in either of those two formats. And there's so many reprints. The reason that these decks are not more expensive, oh, now we're going to animal pictures. Uh, the reason that these decks are not more expensive in my opinion is because all the expensive cards are in Masters, Iconics, um, Masters 25, I mean, Modern Master 2017. You, 
you would be cannibalizing those products if you reprinted some good cards. Like Core Spirit Walker, that one probably should be an enchantment deck, but it was reprinted in Masters 25. So there is this kind of uh, concept. I mean, they definitely understand the secondary market. There's no question about that. They get the secondary market, and a lot of what they do is based on certain uh, values. Uh, they're not going to print a $50 card in one of these commander decks. They know which card is $50. They can't openly say that they base product reprints on the secondary market because they can't openly admit that the secondary market exists because if they did, then it would be gambling, right? Because you would open a booster pack to receive a $50 bill or a $100 bill. You would pay them $10 for a pack of Master 25, hope you pull a foil jace for what's a foil jace at 150 200 right now so at the uh, core the core problem in my opinion uh, is very simple uh, the core problem is the secondary market everyone is so fascinated at the secondary market when i used to play magic when i was a kid we didn't know what the secondary market was we had inquest the inquest we would use was uh ryan's older brother had the inquest magazine and it was like six months old and that's the price we used to trade at <laughs> it sounds insane right but even but that, that that's all we had we didn't really have internet we just had aol instant messenger uh, i guess that means we had internet but we didn't have like websites uh we used pojo and pojo was such a terrible website i don't know if you guys remember this but before we had TCG Player and Card Kingdom was uh, one of the old stand. Like the, I remember ordering a booster box of Onslaught from Card Kingdom and pulling a foil mobilization, which at that time was like one of the best cards. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, oh, and we ordered Fifth Dawn. We ordered it a lot. A senior year of high school, uh, we split a case of Fifth Dawn. That was the first time I split a case. It was from Card Kingdom. So, there you go. There's a promotion for Card Kingdom. Not that they paid me to do that, but Card Kingdom is, it's, I have no problems with them. They are a good website, and I have been ordering, I have ordered a lot from them when I was in high school, and they've always delivered on time, and um, no problems there. So, uh, back to the commander stuff. I think people are just getting really, really greedy. And what do you expect? I mean, how can you expect... I mean, the MSRP did go up, yes. But does that mean you deserve a $10 reprint, an extra $10 reprint? No. Uh, that does not. Um, the MSRP on booster, pa booster boxes will go up, and I'll go over that uh, discussion because a lot of people are uh, minimizing uh, what that means. It actually has a lot of interesting implications to a store level uh, because who's, buy who's selling a booster box? A store. And does the store compete against sports and more? And with the new distribution model being 100% distributors who will give discounts if you order a ton, but will not give discounts to smaller orders from startup or small stores. So at the end of the day, a lot of interesting things are happening in Magic. The value of the decks are fine. I think the Jun deck, you may want to avoid that deck, but the other three decks are fine. Uh, Reddit just has this. Um, I like Commander decks because you know what you're getting from them. And that's not true from any booster box. So the expected value of a booster box, you can be certain, is less than $130. Like, uh, what is it? Dominaria. Uh, M19 will crash soon, but not, not yet. Uh, Dominaria is $65, $66 a box. I would much rather have one commander deck for less money, for way less than a booster box, than to take a chance on Dominaria, where my expected value is $66, including bulk and stuff. So I don't know. People just have a really high expectation of uh, commander decks, and I think that is unwarranted. Uh, commander decks are for new casual players. They're not for entitled players. They have other products that cost $9.99 a pack for those, those entitled players. And that's where the product's going to go. Commander is for, okay, cool. 
I heard my grand I heard my grandson likes magic. Oh, I'm at a Walmart. I need to get him a birthday gift. Oh, here's a commander deck. Hopefully they pick the one that's not Jund. And then they give it to their grandson and the grandson plays with his friends. A lot of a lot of this um desire for value does not exist in the casual playgroups. Yes, they know that magic cards are worth money, but when I was younger, we didn't care. And I think that's kind of who this deck is meant. It's not meant to, all right, let's calculate every dollar and make sure that we're getting our money's worth. No, I mean, it's uh, what magic product can you buy today that will be worth more than you paid for it if you opened it? The answer is like very little. I, I can't think of any on top of my head. Also, Conspiracy Take the Crown is now 91 a box. So it went up from $66 a box to 65 to 91 which is a big jump. And that is the actual price that I pay for them now. Anyway, bye guys.